Hi, my name is Larissa Kaiser, and I am the founder and co-organizer of Jill, a Women Plus in Translation reading series that spotlights women and or non-binary translators, or translators of women and or non-binary authors, or both. And I am Elizabeth Redfield. I am the co-organizer of Jill. Um, and we welcome your submissions. Jill uh, runs an ongoing virtual reading series, which you're watching right now. You can find out more about what we're looking for and how to submit your work on our website, www.jillreadingnyc.com. And now enjoy the reading. I Greek sandals by Wang Pu. I once thought Greek sandals was a spell. I didn't expect that Greek sandals actually existed. But on that particular day, I spotted them in the shop window. I happened to pass this shop by accident. I'd wanted to take bus number 98, which goes to Jung Bay. Maybe the bus stop had been moved, or I had been waiting in the wrong place. In any case, only after I got on the bus did I discover that it was going in the wrong direction. The bus did not take Lychicot Road, but crept up a hill. Then, with seemingly great pleasure, it turned down a winding road. Luckily, I had nothing pressing to do, so I sat quietly on the bus and looked out of the window at the route we were taking. After about 20 minutes, the bus unexpectedly plunged into a dark tunnel and made me hold my breath. It was a long, long tunnel, pointlessly long, so long that I wondered whether the bus would drive me to the other side of the globe. At the first stop after the tunnel, I hurriedly got off. That was where I discovered them, a pair of beautiful sandals. Next to them stood a conspicuous sign which read, Greek Sandals. Now, I have to state the time clearly, because very soon you will find out that time plays an important role in this story. The day I discovered the Greek sandals was a day in March this year. At that time, the words Greek sandals had been continuously sounding in me for two or three years. I was often woken by them from my dreams at night. The words jumped up like a hidden pain in my heart. They emerged from the blur like a sound whose colours and style are faded, so for a while I did not remember who they belonged to. It was only at daybreak, when I was almost dozing off after a night of panicked insomnia, that an image suddenly appeared. It did not slip in, but came dancing instead, unexpectedly, as if it were real. This man had struck my life like lightning and caused such enormous waves in it, and yet only a few images Sounds and words had remained of him. Greek sandals were two of these words. There was only one young woman in the shop, and she had a cold look on her face. She seemed to have a hard time putting on a smile. She answered my questions as follows. These are a real Greek product, which was imported from Greece just a few days ago, and the price, which is 520 Hong Kong dollars, just covers our own costs. That's too expensive, I exclaimed. That is the price of Italian shoes, and these are just sandals. But madam, that shows you are not a specialist, the assistant answered. There are famous Italian shoe brands and famous Greek sandal brands. Sandals are not necessarily plain. Some of the most expensive pairs among Imelda Marcos's collection of 3,000 shoes were sandals, including some Greek sandals. Sandals of this brand? No, of course not. Otherwise, they would cost a few thousand. Go to Landmark in Central and see for yourself. This brand is offered there for over a thousand Hong Kong dollars. If that isn't true, you will get your hundred. You will get your five hundred and twenty Hong Kong dollars back from me. At this point, it was hard for me to say whether it was the eloquence of the young woman or the style of the sandals that convinced me. Before I bought this pair of sandals, I had in fact disapproved of those women who wore sandals. For me, a woman could be dressed ever so elegantly, but wearing sandals she would ruin, would ruin it all. 
Her status would drop rapidly. In an instant, she would change from a lady into a bitch. But with Greek sandals, it is different, he had said during our first date in this small, out-of-the-way bar. A single woman was seated at the bar. She was as beautiful as an elf and made up like a noble lady, but she wore sandals. During this date, we talked a lot. We talked for the entire four hours. Then the following two days, I didn't utter a single word. It seemed as though all the words had been used up that evening. At best, there were a few leftover words remaining, like those typical Chinese greetings. It's hot today, and have you already eaten? After I had experienced such a magnificent feast of words, these phrases did not seem merely annoying, but outright repulsive. However, what surprised me the most was that when he disappeared, he also made the words disappear. Everything became blurry and dim. I couldn't even remember the name of the bar. Only those two words, which if you heard them, would seem completely insignificant, came clearly to me and lingered. Greek sandals. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Deep in the night, when silence had settled over everything, I was on my own, entangled with these two words. They were the secret between us that no other person in the world knew about. Everything resembled a scene after a flood had withdrawn. Even the whirlwind, which had turned my life completely upside down, was gone. Only these words had, for certain inexplicable reasons, remained behind on the beach. I wore the sandals in the office for a whole day and nobody noticed them. Milan, who sits at the desk to my left, seemed to glance at them once, but then her eyes absent-mindedly wandered away and she began to tell me about her husband's awkward manner. It was brilliant last night. He probably didn't expect me to have cracked the password of his email account. This has really broadened my horizon. The messages made me so sick. No wonder he's glued to the computer every night and whenever I come in, he's on his guard, like I'm his worst enemy. Last night, he had his computer on until just before two, when he quietly slipped into bed. He probably thought that I was sleeping and was surprised when he heard me quoting from his emails. You are the light that shines in my dark night. Ha! He is so stupid. You should have seen his face. Milan had this ability. She could tell stories about herself as if they were somebody else's, with great pleasure and delight. She really threw herself into her role, and she watched others quite innocently as they acted. I would usually take pleasure in playing her devoted audience, but I don't know what had got into me on that day. I interrupted her. Look, Milan, do you like my sandals? I asked. Yes, beautiful. Well, I wonder how you can use such clichés today. You are the sky. Guess how much they cost? Milan glanced at my feet. Fifty, maybe a hundred? I wonder... One hundred? You've got eyes and you still don't see Mount Tai? Take a closer look. These are Greek sandals. My cry refocused Milan's attention on reality and on me. This time, she fixed her eyes firmly on my feet. Greece? You mean the Greece of Mount Olympus? Are sandals a special product of the country? Well, they are a bit special. I like the purple. I hope the price was not something like 5,000 Hong Kong dollars, though. They're not that extravagant, I exclaimed. They cost me 1,500. Milan raised her hands defensively and widened her eyes, adopting a look of astonishment. This expression caught the attention of Mike, who was sitting next to her. Mike was this woman's nickname, an abbreviation of microphone. I imagined that in less than half an hour, everybody in the company would know I was wearing a pair of sandals, which had cost 1,500 Hong Kong dollars. Even the boss came out of his office and walked over to my seat. One really never stops learning, he said with an impertinent smile. So far, I had only heard that there are many gods in Greece, not that there are many sandals too. Maybe even the goddess Mazu wears such 
a pair of sandals. That's how he is. He constantly talks nonsense, which he considers to be funny. Normally, of course, I would seize such an opportunity to chat with the boss. In this, I'm not without talent. You exchange a few words and quite effortlessly let the fool puff up proudly. You make him feel as if he has just cracked a great joke. But I don't know why. This time I could not even smile. Instead, anger welled up in me. And in order to silence him, I put on a straight face and remained silent myself. The boss left quickly and disaster was imminent. I knew that when it came to layoffs, my name would be top of the list. The first thing when I, I did when I got home that night was to kick the sandals off my feet as if I wanted to get rid of a curse. I began to seriously think about the question of time. In which year had I seen him for the last time? Why was I still so heartbreakingly sad in the face of these events? As soon as I thought about it, everything appeared clearly in front of my inner eye. I tore these letters which were full of clichés into a thousand pieces. Deep in the night, I was alone and listened to the lost, bitter lamentations rising from within me. Repeatedly, I opened the fridge to drink some water and stepped into the moonlit areas on the floor of my living room that resembled shrouds. Finally, I started to cry. I didn't want anyone to hear me, but I was waiting for a miracle to happen. The familiar sound of the key in the lock and the turn of that key. Heaven. Five years had passed and I was still at the point of origin. I had not found a way down from the stage of this hoary old emotive tragedy. This was indeed a terrifying nightmare. However hard I tried, I still could not take off the formal dress and ornaments of this character. Again and again the makeup returned to my face. Was I condemned to forever stick to my tragic role in this life? Then it occurred to me. The Greek sandals were the main cause of my misfortune. Even though I did not see them anymore, I could still feel their presence. They resembled a hidden virus that could break out at any time. I picked them up from the corner and wrapped them first in a big paper sack and then in an orange plastic and then in a plastic bag. I tucked them I tucked this bundle away at the bottom of a storage compartment and piled a lot of things above it. Oh, but to no avail. Guess what I discerned when I went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Shockingly, the sandals were there in front of the foot of the bed. They radiated the eerie light of a delirious dream. Well let me tell you what I did next. Yesterday, I took the day off and ordered a taxi to take me to Lantau Island. At the foot of a deserted mountain, I sent the taxi driver back. Then I climbed the mountain alone. I walked a long way before finding the right spot. It was a place where, as they say, birds would never build nests and ghosts would never set foot. At this spot, I dug a very, very deep hole and buried the Greek sandals, I guess, forever.